Good evening. Uh, welcome to the meeting. And before we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, after we do the pledge, we're going to also remain standing for a moment of silence for Mary Donlan, who recently passed away at age 84. Mary leaves behind 10 children, 25 grandchildren, and seven great-grandchildren. Mary was a member of St. Bridget Parish. She was a CCD teacher, a member of the Ladies Sodality, the Council on Aging, the Friends of Seniors, and an assistant librarian for more than 20 years in Abington, beginning her service at the North Abington Public Library in 1971. Mary was committed to serving Abington's library users, especially the children. Many Abington residents, now adults, remember standing on the stool to talk to Mrs. Donlan as she checked out their books at the Burton L. Wales Public Library. Mary always had a time to ask a child about the book they were returning and shared her love of reading with countless young borrowers. After her retire retirement, Mary was a dedicated member of the Friends of the Library. Mary loved playing Trivial Pursuit, reading books, the Red Sox, and the Abington St. Patrick's Day Parade, and actually died on March 17th, the, uh, the St. Patrick's Day Parade this year. Mary will be deeply missed by her many friends and loving family. So if we could remain standing after we say the pledge. I pledge allegiance <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. <clears throat> we have a couple of public announcements, or more than a couple, but the, uh, the first one is a proclamation for Jennifer Lee, the South Shore Vote Tech Student of the Year. Is Jennifer here? How are you, Jennifer? Do you mind coming up? And uh, Tom, if you want to come up too, that'd be great. Jennifer is a, uh, a very accomplished student at South Shore Vote Tech, and the uh, Abington Board of Selectmen want to recognize you for that. So this is a proclamation for Jennifer Lee dated March 25th, 2013. Whereas Jennifer Lee, daughter of Michael and Susan Lee of Abington, has been named South Shore Vocational Technical High School's Student of the Year. Whereas Jennifer Lee has excelled in the culinary arts program, and her passion and dedication to the culinary field have been observed by many while managing the in-house restaurant, preparing food on the line, and creating wonderful baked goods. Whereas Jennifer Lee has done a variety of activities that have helped the South Shore community, such as volunteering at the Abington Food Pantry, the South Shore Votech Open House, and advisory dinners. Whereas Jennifer Lee is an integral part of South Shore's Drama Club, her positivity and creative flair spreads to all who know her. Whereas academically, Jennifer Lee is valedictorian of her class, a member of the National Honor Society, and a tutor for underclassmen. And whereas, Jennifer Lee will further her education in the culinary field by attending Johnson and Wales Baking and Pastry Arts Program. Now, therefore, we the, we, the Abington Board of Selectmen, on behalf of the town of Abington and its residents, congratulate Jennifer Lee on her many academic and culinary accomplishments and being named South Shore Vocational Technical High School's Student of the Year. Your dedication, hard work, and commitment are recognized by the Town of Abington with pride. Signed by the Board of Selectmen, Andrew Burbine, Michael Franey, Kevin Donovan, Kenneth Coyle, Thomas Dion. Congratulations. Everybody's here. <laughs> Best of luck. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't know if you have anything you want to say or <laughs> no? Tom, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to say a few words, yeah, we'll say a few words. Yeah, the, uh, the mic there. Certainly. Yep. We're uh, Tom Hickey. I'm the superintendent director at South Shore. Uh, thank you, Selectman, for recognizing Jen. We're very proud of her. Obviously, Jen will save her words for her speech at graduation, and uh, uh, we have no doubt that she'll do a great job. We're also going to uh, take the show on the road and recognize Jen at Mechanics Hall in Worcester on April 4th. It's a statewide gathering of all of the respective 
vocational students of the year from the Commonwealth. So we're very well proud of Jen well as well. Well deserved. Absolutely. Well Thank you. Good luck in Worcester. Well, we're going to get this out to you, the, uh, the proclamation, okay? Because we all have to sign it. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Other public announcements. There are vacancies on the Community Development Advisory Committee. There are three vacancies on the Community Development Advisory Committee. Uh, the, community ro the role of the Community Development Advisory Committee is to advise the staff of the Office of Community Development on matters pertaining to policy, program guidelines, case waivers, and grievances by program participants. Anybody who's interested in serving on that committee, they can contact the town manager's office. They can go on the town website, www.abingtonma.gov. Uh, and put, put in an application that way. But we do need three members, and we'd, uh, anybody who'd like to serve, we'd appreciate it. You also, Abington Sage, um, Saving Abington with Green Energy, is having, having their Abington Cleanup Day, April 20th, 2013, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Volunteers are needed. There's more information available on that on the Abington Sage website, which is www.abingtonsage.com. Uh, just to let residents know, free of charge at the police station on that day are, is a textile drop-off for new or old, clean and not clothes, stuffed animals, socks, towels, rags, curtains, also an e-waste drop-off, so anything with a plug can be dropped off. And at Sullivan Tire on that day on Route 18, you can drop off old tires, no rims, just tires. Does anybody else have any announcements? Ken? Uh, the Abington Board of Health will hold a rabies clinic on April 13th from 9 to noon at the side entrance of Town Hall. Vaccinations for cats and dogs are $10, and dog licenses for 2013 can be obtained at this time. Great. Anybody else? No? All right. Pub public appointments at 6.30 p.m. We have a transfer of Louis Pizza Common Victual License, 988 Bedford Street. Is anybody here for that? Can you come forward, please, sir? Good evening. Do you too? How are you? I'm fine. You just identify yourself for us, please. My name is Harry Jogulopoulos. I had a business in Boston up to a year ago, and now I had the opportunity to purchase uh, Louis' famous pizzeria, and I'm applying for a common eviction license. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? I was. I was going to stay the same as they have been. Everything will stay the same, sir. Stay the same. A piece of recipe the same also? We have to charge you a little extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pending no questions, I'd make a motion we approve. Second. So motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? Just uh, one yep. question. Does this have to be approved by the Board of Health? I, I don't it, see there. It was, yes. It was? Okay. They're actually in compliance with police, fire, Board of Health. Okay. Um, and just a few, a couple of little things from the building inspector that will be addressed upon final inspection. Anything else? No. So we have a motion and a second. No further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Congratulations, sir. Good luck with it. Good luck. Thank you. I need more than luck. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Six thirty-five p.m. We have application for the sale of used article license one one nine five C Bedford Street. Nerys Ortiz. Hi, how are you? Can you come on up, please? Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Could you just identify yourself, please. My name is Nerys Ortiz. Okay, and just tell us a little bit about the business you'll be opening. This is a new business, correct? Yes. I'm, I'm planning to open a um, second-hand um, store. Any questions? And what, what type of articles will you be? <clears throat> um, clothes, shoes, um, different kind of article. News and in, in, in use. Thank you. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion we approve. Second. And a second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Good luck. Congratulations. Good luck with the business. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank have you. a good night.
Okay, action discussion items. I'm going to take item number six first, which is the discussion appointment of town manager, <coughs> if that's okay with everybody. Sure. We had our interviews on Saturday. We had four applicants who um, I think all did very well. Uh, I would like to thank the search committee, which consisted of Ken Coyle, our selectman representative, Ann Welch, uh, our citizen at large, Peter Schaefer, the superintendent of the schools, Rick Franey, the finance committee representative, and Sean Riley, the town moderator, for all the work that they did. They, uh, they presented us with a difficult choice, actually, which is good for the town. But um, thank you, Ken, and everybody on the committee who did all that work. So with that being said, does anybody have any questions, any? Uh, just, just a comment on myself personally. Um, I am not entirely ready to make that decision tonight, but I will abide by the wishes of the board. I took Friday off. I did a lot of homework, a lot of research. We went Thursday night and interviewed Saturday. And like you say, it was great. It was phenomenal, but it did present a problem because those candidates were so well qualified and, and, and did you know such an outstanding job. I had a little bit of a conflict Sunday. I was not able to put the time I intended into it. Um, and I, I kind of think it's on myself personally. It was an important, very important decision, probably the most important decision I'm going to make on this board. And the candidates, I think, deserve that I, I, if I could. Um, I had some more questions that I'd like to have answered that would resolve my issues. But I, again, um, that's just me, and I will abide by whatever the board wishes to do. Oh. <clears throat> Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I'm ready to vote, but in deference to Michael, if you need more time. You know, in the past, if anybody has needed, as we've said before a couple of occasions, at least way back when, we've always deferred to let that member um, have the time that they need. However, I do think it should be done this week. Um, I do think if, if you need a couple of days, that's fine with me, but I think by the end of the week, based on everybody's schedule, that we should hold a special meeting and be prepared to vote, though. Is that, that, Kevin. Is yeah, that all right? That's perfect. I don't have any problem delaying it. I, I think, <clears throat> you know, we did just have interviews Saturday, finished Saturday afternoon and it's now Monday night. You might even be able to get some more input from residents if, if they get a chance to watch the, uh, watch the cable interviews. And Yeah, I agree. As long as we do something this week, I think that yeah, would be Yeah, the only thing I'm, I'm going to say is that because it's Holy Week, there's a lot of, I know myself, I've got stuff going on at night, um, and it's Easter weekend, and I know people may have plans uh, for the holiday, I don't know, what does Thursday afternoon look, look like for everybody? Is that, I mean, that's assuming I, uh, that's assuming we postpone it. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I, again, I, huh? I'm willing to, to go tonight, but I will respect Mr. Fernie. But I, I would just ask, is it more of a question of um, more reference checking, or you just want to go yeah, look A little at bit about Tom, and I, I also want to talk to a few more people. Um, I did get to talk to, like, the superintendent of schools and, and uh, members of the uh, search committee today. I, I just am not 100% there, and I think that the search committee did such a thorough job. Um, I, 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 I'm not, I, I haven't made my mind up 100% is what I'd put it like, and, yeah. and I just, I'd, I'd, in, you know, again, I respect the position of the board. I, I can understand that. I'm just telling you, just being honest about it. Yeah. Well, again, I, I, again, I think, our, as Andy points out, our standing policy is if, if a member needs some more time, then defer to that. And I'm in agreement with Kevin. I, I think we need to do it. This sure. week, and I'm available whenever morning, noon, night, and as I. Uh, How's Thursday for everybody? If we Thursday, everybody fine agrees for me. on Thursday. So right, two, two, two thirty, three o'clock, something like that. Is three o'clock would be fine. Three o'clock on Sorry. Thursday. Does that work? Three o'clock. Everybody on available Thursday. on three on Thursday. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's uh, it's filmed. Or I was going to Justin. Is that I something? Would, live would be even better, but. Justin. Okay. okay. Good. It won't be a long, you know, I don't expect it to go, you know. Famous uh, last I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> don't jinx us. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so Thursday at 3, we'll, uh, we'll bring it up and make a decision on that day. Okay, well, I'll, to formalize it, I'll make a motion that we have a special selectman's meeting this Thursday at 3 p.m., um, asking cable TV to televise it live for the sole purpose of uh, selecting a new town manager 
and also to have an executive session immediately yes. thereafter to discuss parameters for contract negotiations. I'll second that. Any discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. So, Thank sorry you. if you can get that, that posted. Certainly. Great. Um, are we going to notify the four candidates tonight that? I, yeah, I'll, I'll, give a, I'll give them a yeah, call we after we're done and let them know that. Yeah. Okay. So that's that one. So next on the action discussion items, approval of minutes for March 11th, 2013, open session. Move we approve. There's a motion to approve. A Is second. there a second? And a second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Item number two, or actually number three, renewal of used article licenses. Dory. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the annual renewal, and the fire department and police department have no issues with any of the licensees listed. Okay, just for the uh, the public's knowledge, uh, the licenses are for Susie's Selections on Bedford Street, Old Abington Country Store on Bedford Street, Linda's Consignment Boutique on Brockton Avenue, Electric Planet on Washington Street, Passion for Fashion on Bedford Street, The Eclectic Collection on Bedford Street, Deja Vu Home Thrift Shop on Brockton Avenue. So we have a motion. So moved. Second? Second. And a second. Any discussion? Is Ken? Now, if one of these places, I, I thought one of these places was closed, so that just means if the paperwork doesn't come in, it doesn't get approved. Which one is that? Second one down, I thought it's been been closed for a I, while. I, I thought it was too. Which one? Um, it, old Abington place? Country Store. Yeah, Old Abington Country Store. I know it was for sale, but I, is it, I'm is it closed? Sure closed. Yeah. I'll have to check on that. I wasn't aware that it was closed. I mean, it, it, the vote was to pending receipt of paperwork anyways. So I mean, if, exactly. they don't, if they don't turn the paperwork, then. Right. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Vote the date of the special town meeting. Are they still? Actually, here comes Mr. D'Agostino now, so we'll. Uh... John. Um, maybe Dory can answer the question. Yeah, are we, uh, is it still, I know we had discussed April 22nd. Is that what we're recommending now? Yes, it's still in, April is 22nd. That, is, in the high school, the high school is available. They're available that night. The rest of the week, they'll be um, decorating for the prom. But I don't see it being more than one night. Okay, I move special. we. Okay, I'll move we uh, call a special town meeting for Monday, April twenty second, at seven p.m. at Abington High School for the purpose of uh, having a special town meeting. Time. Seven p.m. Seven p.m. <coughs> is there a second? Second. Any discussion? If not. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Item number four, review of the special and annual town meeting warrant. Has that changed at all? Or? It's changed slightly. You have the um, warrant right there. The only thing that's changed is we received an article from the planning board um, regarding the ma marijuana article, and it was after the annual town meeting is closed. So we put it on the special town meeting warrant because the special town meeting warrant was open. But you could, it, it doesn't ma doesn't need to be either a special or an annual, but typically we've done bylaw changes at an annual, so you could take the vote if you wanted tonight to place it on the annual. That would that'd be up to you. But it's currently on the special because that's yes. the way it needed to be. John, we're just taking up the uh, review of the special and annual town meeting okay. warrant. So, we're uh, pretty. Don't have anything to add to it? We're pretty close on, um, you know, finding the sources of funding for the 22nd. So that would be a good date. We did. We voted that okay. just, yep, before you came in. Can I, I just, um, in terms of that from the planning board, I really think that that should be something for the annual, rather than. If, if the special, if we're going to deal with money items, um, I mean, that's just my thought. Well, I, I mean, traditionally, those types of things have been on the annual. So yeah. I, I think it's bylaws, I think we have to. Uh, you, you can vote to put it on the annual if yeah. you'd like. 
I think, yeah, I think what I would like to do then is to uh, move Article 7 of the proposed special to the annual town warrant that's going to be held June 10th. Yep. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. And then the rest of it is just when they finish with their financial stuff, we'll be able to right. vote we should be able, we should okay. have no I, I have a question, though, Mr. Go Chairman. Tom. Is this officially closed now, the special? Yes. Okay. So I can mark this as final. And no. The, the warrant is closed, but this. But I'm, I'm not going to see, like, other articles appearing on this, right? There's going to be six articles on the special. Right. Okay. And how about the annual? Is that still open? Closed. Neither okay. one are open. So both closed, yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Do you have anything to add, John, on the uh, either one, on the special or the annual town meeting warrants or at this point? I d I don't um, you know, I don't think so. Um, I mean if we if we have something that needs to be added, I I, I don't know what that is at this point. But um, you know, I would rather add it if we had the opportunity to add it before it goes to publication. Otherwise, you're going to have to hold another uh, town meeting, which will cost you additional money. Mm -hmm. So, it would be it would behoove us to um, to put our additional articles on if necessary. I don't see the any need for that at this point. But if something should arise, we should have the uh, opportunity to at least consider it. Okay. Any other questions on the warrants? Mm -hmm. Okay. Item number five, discussion on salary changes for park and recreation duties. That was something we took up last time, and I'm not sure that's, if that's still. That's correct. It was, um, I, um, we're trying to get programs running. I know that, um, Kennan has has met with the Park and Rec Commission, and they're also of the same uh, persuasion, so to speak, that they realize that programs need to um, to get started sooner rather than later. Uh, we're in a unique circumstance with um, you know basically the disability, uh, so to speak, in the eventual passing of Mark Shirokis that um, the program itself has been in some period of disarray for a while. Um, again, it's, it's another department uh, with some very serious responsibility um, with no continuity or backup. And, you know, Mark is a perfect example. Last year, we developed that continuity. We established a process that allowed us, the, you know, to continue the programs and services, and it worked very successfully. So we're actually, all we wanted to do was to take a couple of people in the proposal and give them some extra money and allow them the opportunity uh, to get these programs up and running sooner rather than later. And I mean sooner because, again, we're fast approaching um, sign up uh, for field use and we need to get advertisement out for the uh, Grove and uh, the Eager Beaver Camp. Um, and the people that we have proposed to uh, provide additional money to are the ones that we um, feel are in the best situation possible to maintain that continuity, to keep the programs up and running, and hopefully um, with a new person hired at some point in the future um, for Park and Rec that, um, that a different programs or an expansion of programs will be realized. But right now, uh, we're in uh, a situation where the board took a vote, not for any sal you know, to, no to not increase salaries and to um, without approval of the board of selectmen. Which you know I have my own feelings about that. I don't think that that a policy can amend the charter. The board, the town manager has the right to affix those salaries uh, as long as an appropriation has been made. The appropriation that we're referring to is the appropriation of Mark Shirokis's. Um, salary, and we're going to take some of that money, which is on the town side of the budget, 
and um, has nothing to do with program income, has nothing to do with Eager Beaver Camp or any of the other uh, programs that are funded through um, enrollment and, and a fee. So what we want to do is to is to continue that 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 process, and um, um, I don't know if we need a vote to do it or if the board is consenting and allowing us to just go ahead and do it. We haven't um, actually signed any paperwork. I've told um, Kenan to begin the process because, uh, quite frankly, um, we need to get the people in place and the board of selectmen. Um, really are an advisory uh, 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 policy board and um, I understand the situation I understand why it was um, you know established um, but this is interfering with the administration of government and our ability to get programs up and running so I'm looking for some consent uh, for the proposal that we had put forth um, you know to go ahead and do that um, so can you just detail the proposal once again um, I don't know if I have. It was in the packet last week, I would imagine. I don't think I have it. I've, I've got a get... copy of it if you want to. You want to just go forward, John? I think three people are involved. The three people that are involved are, are, are the administrative assistant, Kate Marini, um, Peter uh, Serino, who was performing the role of Assistant Superintendent of Parks and when Mark, and Mark's absence, and Kate Casey, um, and also uh, the seasonal labor people, which are um, 40 hours a week for 18 weeks. We're extending that to get the fields ready and to, and to start that that process. There was some confusion, I think, perhaps in the, at the bottom of this, and everyone apparently focused on that, which was. That leaves a balance of $24,000 to adjust salaries and stipends for the superintendent and the assistant superintendent. That was not my intention. The, the stipends are already part of the collective bargaining agreement, and we're not talking about adjusting those stipends further. Um, and all we're talking about is... Just looking for those three part-time positions. The, uh, well, in, yeah. Well, most because of them are hired anyway. Right. So we're, we're not looking to create new positions here. All we're looking to do um, is to... Additional funding about, for those uh, positions. Give them additional money, additional salary, and additional time. And did you meet with the Park and Rec on Thursday, or did the, Kenan? Kenan did, yes. How did that go? Do you, do you know? Um, Have you talked to we, we made this proposal to them because there is no alternative at this point. Um, and they, I think, were fine with it. I don't think that there was much of pushback. Actually, the uh, youth groups were there. Um, they are concerned uh, that we've got nothing going here, that you know things are still um, not finalized, and you know, that's, where we, that's, that's where we stand. Does anybody, Ken? Are these, now these people, um, administrative assistant, part-time recreation superintendent, camp director, are they already working now, or are they like in been laid off for the summer the last last year, and they're coming back? The people that we have talked about are coming back. They're coming back. We're so asking them to come back earlier okay. than what we would normally. So they're not working right now, and we okay. Peter is. Okay. Peter, Peter is working for the school system. Okay. And is he part time with the school system, or he's full time with the school system, and then in the summer he come on part time? That's correct. He'll he'll be the. He'll be the face of yep. Mark Shiroka, so to speak, okay. as far as the uh, direction of the camp goes. Tom and then Kevin. John, I just want to make sure I understood you. I think there was confusion, and a lot of it was on my part at the last meeting. But it, it does say that there will be a positive balance of $24,673.84 to adjust salaries and stipends. Um, I, I, are you saying that that? right now is not going to be allocated for any stipends the 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 money will not be allocated for stipends for park for for um ken and canal and jack um it will okay okay yeah. all right then then i agree we don't need to take a vote on anything because the, <clears throat> the original motion in terms of that you're referring to was for existing staff if there was going to be incremental raises or anything it spoke nothing because i made it it spoke nothing of existing 
part-time staff. It was only meant to be, you know, as I indicated, and I think the thing that threw at least me off was that reference at the end, and maybe it was a yeah. question of not, the communication wasn't understood correctly. <coughs> um, if that is your intent, as you've indicated, I don't see any impediment whatsoever, and honestly, I don't think it's within our purview to do anything with it, because I think that's solely within your purview. I think the question comes as the ambiguity became is, again, focusing on that stipend issue, is if it was going to be stipends to the current members <coughs> of the <coughs> manager's union, then I think that's it when 150E. It has to bargaining process. I do I'm, agree with that. Okay. And, and I think the other, the other issue that kind of folded in with this was the issue of, of the um, um, increase for the network administrator. Correct. Um, because when he was hired, he was hired before the union had actually formed. And in, in my uh, letter to him, we would review his salary after six months. And, you know, uh, we didn't put a, uh, any amount of money in there because we didn't know if he was going to work out or not. And, you know, of course, that has come to pass that he's probably a great asset to the town. And um, uh, that is something we're going to negotiate p potentially with the, with the union um, at that point. Yeah. Tom? I Go ahead, Kevin. No, I was going to say, the, the, I think the issue is resolved. To me, the broader issue before the board, and, and again, John, I think you hit the nail on the head. I, I think there's a question of policy of the board, and, and clearly we took a vote as a board that any sort of salary adjustments need to come back. And I, I think you feel differently, and, and again, you know, you've, you've written a few things, but I guess I, I'd like to get a ruling <laughs> from council as far as, I don't think people understand the broad fiscal um, responsibility you have as the town manager and the decisions you can make. And you know, you wrote something that basically you were citing in Bridgewater, their town council, in whether they had the ability that if they wanted the services of a new attorney, let's say, whether they could do that. And I think your position was that's provided for by the town manager and the charter. And, I'm, I'm conflicted there because, again, I, I clearly see that in the charter, but then I qu it, it question my, you know, what our role is as policy. If we have a policy of no salary increases, but I trumps think, what, I guess, is what I'm, well, what I'm asking. Well, let, let me help you with that because I think we can probably clarify that. Um, the charter was never intended to be um, changed by policy. The board has the ability to set policy, but it has a parameter in which to set that policy. And I think that the the case in, uh, in point with uh, you know Bridgewater was that the board overstepped their policy and actually tried to change the charter by telling the manager who he could or could not hire um, for the council position in Bridgewater. The, you can, and I talked to uh, council about this, you cannot change the charter or amend the charter uh, through a policy vote of the board. It can't be done. Um, and I think that that is basically a guiding light or a tool that you should use in setting, in, you know, in, in, in setting policy for um, the town manager and whoever happens to be in this position over the next uh, six weeks. And I think that, you know, what I've come to learn over the three years that I have been here is that you voted for, and, and the townspeople approved, a strong town manager form of government. And, you know, you can argue as to whether or not this is purely a strong town manager form of government. I'd say it isn't. But as far as fiscal policy and control and authority, that certainly rests with the town manager and um, setting the salaries and so forth is something that clearly rests with the town manager. Within the prescribed, and again, their structure, within the collective bargaining agreement, within the um, um, appropriation at town meeting, so on and so forth, this uh, action that we're taking tonight is clearly within the appropriation of town meeting. We vote salary, we vote expenses. And within the park and rec salary, there is extra money available. Within that money, we want to take that and, and get these programs up and running. The question becomes, how efficient do you want your government to operate? Do you want it to operate where um, every other week we come back to the Board of Selectmen and ask permission to do X, Y, and Z? Um, 
or do you want those those decisions and no disrespect but do you want those decisions to be made outside of the political vacuum so to speak and what is truly in the best business interest of the town to do so and i think that that is probably a guiding principle if i can leave any with you with that i i would recommend you consider and that is you have every right to set policy but you have absolutely no right within that policy to amend change or otherwise um, reduce the powers and authority um, of the town manager so said another way is the vote we took on february 11th i think it might have been or thereabouts to basically um have you consult with the board before any salary increases you feel that wasn't a legitimate vote i i don't i will have no opinion on that i mean i'm here asking you to I, we're not going to get into a philosoph no, but, philosophical but, discussion on no, the town chat yeah, here. To, to, I know, to but I, 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 would like, I would like to have town council come back and let me know as a selectman, as a representative of the townspeople, whether we have, let me say, the right to set a policy that says no more salary increases unless the town manager comes back to the board. Well, if and it's again, hold, hold on, hold on, John. If, if that's something that the board wants to get an opinion on I have no problem in doing that okay. I don't think one particular no, I, I agree and that's that why opinion. I'm bringing it up in public session here and, and again I I just I'm very conflicted I'd with this because that. people say to me well and again John you know deference I I, I respect your opinion in, in, in certain matters but I I didn't on some of the raises that were given out to town managers and I just feel that that should have been done in consulting consultation with the board and it wasn't and I thought that part of the way to try to rectify that was to set a policy that yeah you need to come back it wasn't forever if you if you understood I guess what I was trying to get at it wasn't in perpetuity it was for some time until the board you know rescinded it and what I'm what I'm getting now is it, it was you know a vote that didn't matter and, and again, not not on this subject now, but just in general. And I, it's more of a policy decision for me. Is where, where does it end? I mean, it just seems to me. I don't think. Again, I agree with John. I think the the powers, the autonomy, and in, 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 in financial decisions that is given under our charter to the town manager is pretty broad. That I don't think people understand. And I think they look to the selectmen that why is this happening? And you know, when I say to them, well, we didn't know. <laughs> they say what? Why is there a board of selectmen? So I, again, for me, I just would like to find out on a legal footing whether we, we can trump, I'll use my own words, we can trump what's in the town charter. But that's just my opinion. I'd, I'd, I'd support Tom in that and getting some clarification on that because I had told you and I meant that, that I'd support you on, on doing that. But however, I think that the, the night we took that vote on um, you know, asking you to come back was also we had been hearing a lot of information about the dire straits that the town was going in, and, and that we we were we we weren't quite getting what we thought, and we were perhaps going to be forced to make cuts and stuff. So, going forward, um, I wanted to be a little bit you know cautious. That, that basically that was my my point of view, but in no way, shape, or form, I, I know where you're coming from here, and I and we had spoken about that. And as far as the part timers and getting the growth, we do not want to, you know. No, no matter what our difference is, leave the youth groups or the Park and Rec commissioners out to dry. So um, that's all I have to say. But I would support getting in a. a an well, let's do one thing at a time. Let's, we, as far as the Park and Rec positions, the three positions, I think everybody in agreement that that's fine. It's well within yep. uh, Tom Innes' purview yeah, to, to do to do that. Yeah. And uh, okay, uh, do, do you folks want a, an opinion from Town Council like Tom has asked for? Or is Somebody make a motion. I would. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Yes. Ken? I mean, we have a charter. We have a strong town manager. That's what the citizens of Edmonton wanted. So, I mean, I don't know. It, it seems stupid to try to kind of bypass that. I, I, I agree. I don't like the way things were done. But, I mean, that's, that's, it should be done in a spirit of cooperation. That, that's the problem. And, and just circumventing what the town meeting voted it, it is not right. So, I, you know, I'm going to vote against you know, getting a ruling. That's all. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Town manager report, John. FY 2014 revenue budget estimates. Um, I provided you with um, 
where we stand um, as of today. And it's a moving target. And um, I will tell you that I will tell you that um, we have a $1.576 uh, million dollar, um, deficit at the present time. Now, I know that there has been some prophecies uh, going about that, you know, this is going to result in layoffs. Well, you know what? Um, that is yet to, to be uh, determined. Um, I think that as we move through this process and we become more deliberate in our revenue uh, expectations and we become more deliberate in our expenditure uh, reductions, that um, there may or may not be uh, layoffs in FY14. But I will tell you that those layoffs, if any of them do occur, um, will not cannot be contributed solely to um, salary increases because if you're looking at a 1.576 million dollar deficit, that did not occur because of salary increases, whether they've been collectively bargained or not. So um, <coughs> I, I want to make that perfectly clear. Now I've spent three years in this position. Uh, trying to build a strong financial foundation for the town. And um, I don't want that to be overlooked in this process. So um, we are looking at um, revenue. Uh, I don't know if you have this sheet right here. This is the sheet that has FY14 budget estimates, revenue budget estimates, including other sources. Yes, we have. Okay. We you do. will see at the top that we have total warrants of about $60,784. We have total expenses of 47,606, uh, and we have total revenues of 46,090. I will comment by stating that the revenue portion of our budget is very conservative at this point in time. We had made our budget revenue estimates uh, for FY. Uh, 13 we incre we we inc we met our estimates by 4.57 percent above what we have projected so we're going to look at revenues again that's going to close some of the gap um, but I think that when I come back to you in the next couple of weeks I am going to be discussing with you um, the fact that you know from the town's perspective, we may not be able to hire uh, additional firefighters. We may not be able to do any of the additional hires that we had in, in anticipated. And in order for the school department to maintain <coughs> a level service budget, which also includes no hires, they need a million additional dollars. And I think that those type of incremental increases over time is, is what becomes the challenge, I think, within the, uh, the budget. So if we go down further, we look at our levy limit, we look at our, our, our projected uh, two and a half uh, adjustment, which is the two and a half percent raise, uh, as you say. Uh, new growth, we're estimating very conservatively at $200,000. We're going to take a closer look at that as our um, new growth estimates become more factual than, than a um, guess at this point. And so what you'll see is that, you know, with our debt exclusions, we have a total levy limit of $28,342. Um, we have a snow and ice deficit of 470. I sent you another snow and ice deficit um, today, which is about 570000 so there's an additional 100000 and that we raise that on our recap. And so as a result of raising it on your recap, it reduces the amount of money that you have available in FY14. Um, and I can tell you that when you look at snow and ice, 
one year you'll you'll have a, a, a smaller amount of, uh, of deficit and the next year it'll be three times or four times the amount um, the the worst year that I've had was probably um, a little over six hundred and seventy thousand dollars in snow and ice deficit you can't budget for that you don't know from one year to the next so um, while I would have liked to have increased uh, the snow and ice budget do do you increase the snow and ice budget at the detriment of uh, services and programs I don't think you do that so that's basically you know where we stand with with respect to revenue we're looking at um, a total operational uh, levy of 27 million 856 464 that number will change it'll go down further which means that the deficit will increase uh, exponentially uh, based on the amount that the snow and ice deficit factors in so we're looking at a, 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 a bigger a snow and ice deficit at this point so yeah somebody had a question I just just to pick up on that comment John I I thought of the snow and ice deficit was outside the limits of property proposition two and a half oh, I that that 570 gets put on the recap as uh, needs to be raised and appropriate just like some of the cherry sheet charges that get put on that that it's almost like a surcharge on the on the tax bill as opposed to a reduction in the on the um, in the levy limit you no know, the, the money has to come from somewhere and it comes from your 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 receipts in 14 so you have to adjust that um, there's no credit card here what we have is you know revenues and expenditures we can we can overexpend in snow and ice but we have to make it up we can't carry it as a deficit we have to have at the end of the fiscal year a balanced budget uh, by the time we set the tax rate and preferably we like to do it at, at town meeting and so in order to do that you know the the FY 14 numbers will be adjusted to reflect that deficit because we have to capture it in that year it, it's not uh, a debt exclusion it's not uh, uh, an operation override um, it, it, it is part of the tax base and we have to um, take care of that deficit within the tax revenue that we raise so that's what's causing yeah at least a half a million dollars worth of the deficit in the present time it's a big number it is and the way the winter has been going I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon <laughs> so and everyone wants to street plow we, you know even if it's going to melt in three days we've got to get that street plow so that we don't have any snow and 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 it's a public safety issue and I'm, I'm, I'm making a joke of it in some respect but the actuality is we have a duty and responsibility for as public safety officials to make sure that our streets and sidewalks and are passable and, and that costs money it costs about thirty two thousand dollars an inch of snow that's what the cost of removal is any other questions so you, th we, you think when we come back in April our April 8th meeting you'll have things tightened up I'll have to uh, it'll be more it'll be far more tight than it is right now if we look at chapter 70 um, again we've added the 51,000 for chapter 70 as I've indicated before um, there's an additional 200,000 in this number that we have not captured that's the governor's number uh, we're waiting for the house number to come out um, and that's the number that we're going to go with probably for town meeting um, in June I don't think we're going to have the Senate numbers um, before town meeting we may and if we do we'll make the adjustment at that point as well so we're looking at a total revenue number uh, for state revenue of 9.3 million which is really relatively flat um, if you look at the economy and you look at the way things are going right now um, the Senate the state uh, has received more tax revenue uh, than they estimated initially I don't believe the um, 9c cuts are going to take effect if they do um, we will deal with that within the operating budget uh, for FY 13 so we're looking at 9.3 million in revenue uh, we have a flat number for motor vehicle excise and that number is 1 million 383 we collected 1 million uh, 698 um, 
last year. So we're using a lesser number than what we actually received. Again, we're being very conservative on our revenue numbers at this point in time until we get some key indications. We sent out um, excise tax bills. We're waiting for that revenue to come back to estimate how much additional revenue we can anticipate from the same time in the previous year. So we're, we're being very cautious about our revenue estimates at this point. And, that, and that's also inflating the deficit. Question? No, I, I think you answered it. So you, you're, um, the bills have been sent out as of February something for excise tax. So you should know what your total commitment is there. You just don't know if people are going to pay those bills. Well, they're going to pay them at some point. Um, but I do anticipate that the commitment I, I need we need to know what the what what the commitment was that went out we do know that and how how that compares to the commitment last year now there's the large commitments gone out already we have two a smaller commitment going out in um, April or May um, but we also collect about two or three hundred thousand in previous years mm. so we'll have a better number probably by the end of uh, I, um, March as to where we stand, uh, and so I can report that in April. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, John. Now, uh, just uh, one other quick note: we're we're estimating revenue for FY14 in the meals tax of one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Now, last year we we estimated the meals tax at two hundred thousand. The, the State Department of Revenue called us up and wanted to know where we got the number from. We told them we got it from them. They were the ones who gave us the number, and I guess they were satisfied with that answer because, um, you know, we're, we're on target to make uh, close to the 200, but again, that's, uh, we're not quite sure we're going to make it, so we're trying to be fiscally conservative with revenue estimates so that we, we don't end up where we did uh, before I came here. We had outrageous revenue numbers. Nothing ma matched, nothing made sense, but it balanced the budget. And as a result, we ended up, you know, cutting um, a lot of people. And that's what contributed to the massive layoffs that we had. We, we were dealing with hocus-pocus revenue numbers. John, do they give you a, a monthly report on the uh, meals tax revenue? No, it, uh, it, it's, we don't get a monthly report from them. We, we just get a check. You know, and then we, we match it based on what we projected. So we're, I don't know what our new number is, but. Um, I'm not sure what the new number is. I think it's about 125. I was going to ask you for the next meeting, can you give us that report, not just on the meals tax, but where we stand revenue-wise that we've had in the, the last quarter? Yeah. On all revenue. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So um, we're looking at a. Uh, operational revenue number of about forty million seven fifty and we're looking at um, a deficit of about one point five when it's all said and done it'll be a little bit higher any questions about that the next thing I'd like to go to is the department description the approved F FY 13 in FY14 requested budget numbers. And I wanted to talk on, on the uh, uh, budget category breakdown of increases and where we, uh, where we stand with, uh, with those increases. We're, we're looking at approximately a 8% increase between the town and the school. Uh, regarding the budget for FY14 um, requested. That number needs to be closer to 4%. So that's driving part of our um, expenditure deficit at this point in time. Uh, I, I'll, I'll walk through the, the expenditure portion so you know where we are. We're, we're looking general government in FY14, uh, FY13 is 1.452. The, the original request is 1.601. Now in that um, re requested number, again, we have to go back and look at the expenditure portion of the budget closer. 
And as we do, we will begin to pare that number down between now and our next meeting. The police department numbers have increased. The fire department numbers have increased. Um, the building inspector numbers have increased and we're looking at as far as public safety is concerned, which includes civil defense and animal control. We're looking at uh, a 4.7 million FY13 number. We're looking at a 5.4 million FY14 number. So, um, and then we have a school department budget number um, of 20 million uh, $88,255. Uh, South Shore regional budget, which was a, a slight increase from 1.912 to 1,962,000. And then, of course, you'll see the highway breakdown um, and, and how we ended up with, uh, which also includes waste collection, street lighting, snow and ice removal. Again, what you'll notice in the FY14 budget, again, we're trying to increase the snow and ice appropriation we're going up by an increment of 20,000 that may or may not last in the budget process um, and then the rest I think is is, is pretty self-explanatory uh, the right hand column gives you a breakdown of the percentage of the budget between school and town uh, the numbers that obviously are not calculated here and are very difficult to calculate would be retirement but if you look at the bottom portion you will see that the um, school without South Shore Regional in 13 went from 18,591,000 to an FY14 number of 20,088,255. And when you look at the health insurance benefits, you know, obviously we've, uh, that's 3.214, and we're going to be discussing health benefits um, a little later on. And of course, in Medicare, Medicare is tied to the amount of money that employees earn, um, <clears throat> and that number is about 180,546. We are projecting a slight deficit in Medicare for FY13, which we will make up um, with an intermunicipal transfer. Questions? Any questions on this? Tom? Uh, just a couple of observations, John, but one, um, as I, I think I um, reached out to, um, very good job. I, I don't think people, I don't think you highlighted enough on the waste collection you did at the last meeting, but certainly um, this year we have a um, budget of a little over a million dollars, and next year that's going down to about 850000 Not as much as you wanted, but I know there was some uh, rationale for that. My, my question is, you, you pointed out the school is up about 8% now, but just my rough math is general government's up about 11%, and let's call it public safety is up about 17 percent. My question is, wh what kind of a range do you expect them to be coming in at when it's all said and done? Well, in order to balance the budget, I do not anticipate that we're going to be able to hire any new personnel, period. Um, and that's going to be something across the board. I'm going to be meeting with um, staff and department heads, giving them where we are and what we need them to do, <coughs> have them go back and make their adjustments, come back to us with you know, solid numbers. So um, I don't think that um, a lot of these numbers are, you know, the way they're projecting right now, that we're going to be able to meet the um, um, employee requirements that they need at this point in time. Again, um, the economy is growing. It's not growing as fast as we need it to grow. Um, housing market is up. But beyond that, um, the unemployment rate and the recovery is still very slow and very methodical um, in its approach to providing no additional <laughs> revenue to cities and towns. Um, as I said to you before, when the uh, uh, recession occurs, uh, municipalities are the last to feel it. Private sector is the first. When we come out of it, we're the last to come out of it, and, and the um, uh, private industry is the first to come out of it. And so, and that's just been a standard um, procedure. Um, if the economy is doing well, we're not going to feel it until 15 sometime. I, I just you. I had one question on the, uh, the liability insurance, the 290 for this year versus the 440 for next year. Is there a reason for that spike or? Uh, um, where are you? The last the last entry on the left. On the left, okay. Liability insurance. Well, the 
This number, the 290 number, was underestimated by about 60,000. We went back and got additional money. So that number. But that, sh that should actually be 350? It should be about 350, and it's going up by about 90,000. And um, most of that is. Um, is that the workers' comp? Mm -hmm. it's, it, that is both. Yeah. And we hadn't had an increase in our, well, on fire and police for years. That's just catching up. And we also had an increase in our. Uh, workers' compensation. Thank you. Yeah, and, and also I think what happened too, um, you know, these these hurricanes that we talk about and see, uh, the when, when the industry has a sizable amount of claims, it's spread out among all of its policyholders, and so municipalities are no exception. Those increases are are, are also part of this. A very small part. The larger part is obviously the claims history that we have. And um, right now, we have we've had three people, or two people, incidentally, that are, are still out, have been out for a long time. And um, we're, gonna, we're gonna probably begin to see those claims come off in FY16, FY17, because it's a three-year lag. So that's why that's up. Thank you. Tom? John, can we improve that with any sort of training, OSHA, or related to see if that would uh, help our experience rate with um, the insurance companies? Oh, yeah. We, we actually are working with our carrier right now to make sure that we um, designate a facility that's going to do uh, pre-employment and training physicals, that, uh, that are going to do um, training for us in, 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 in safety. But again, we have to pay for that training. So it requires us to have money in a training budget for highway personnel, uh, fire, police, confined space training for um, the various departments that are involved in that. Because those are the higher susceptible activities for which accidents occur. So yes, the, the, the point is yes, we, we, we are going to propose to do that. But again, when you look at the budget and you finally get to a balanced budget, whether or not we have the ability to continue that training, uh, which I believe in wholeheartedly, is going to be another issue as to whether or not we can do that um, when we Thank get you. to the budget. Anything else? Okay. Thanks, John. Revolving accounts? You want to go over those? Or? Oh, I have some more stuff. Oh, you got <coughs> a long list tonight. I'll be here for an hour. Button your hatches. Button the hatches. Um, had a very pleasant meeting with uh, Richard Cracker Donovan, who <laughs> was invited to a meeting of the uh, Sage Committee about expansion of the um, plot, uh, the community garden. They want to increase it. They want to extend the existing guardian 100 feet, feet east along the lot line. This is Cracker. I can tell you that I can gar almost guarantee you he didn't walk it, but I'm sure that he had some input. The same width, which would be approximately 45 feet. And I think if we you know, have a deficit, we should look at probably doing a uh, marijuana farm up there too <laughs> and, and reduce our total deficit completely and we can hire a, a, a woman business owner to do it only in Massachusetts but um, the SAGE committee is looking for some sort of guidance from the board as to whether or not they would like to increase the um, existing guardian by 100 feet east along the lot line and keep the same width um, and if the board obviously is in favor of doing that, that meets one of the hurdles. The second hurdle is um, running a rubber hose below the frost line, uh, Cracker's terms. A few feet now, he wants to do it a few feet down um, because there's no water to the garden. And, you know, last year I think um, it was difficult getting water, you know, to, to the to the garden, and um, I know that at least one former selectman was using uh, used um, Miller High Life uh, beer cans to water um, someone's plot up there. So um, <coughs> we're looking to try to run some water up there, and if we can, we're going to try to do it. 
I, I put Cracker on the uh, on the case. He's going to uh, be knocking on some windows and doors to see if he can get some of that stuff donated. But if we can, I think it would be worth us trying to provide, you know, some means of water to the site this year if we can do it. So uh, I don't know how the board feels about that, but um, I think if you give the blessing on the 100 foot and the 45 uh, feet wide and all the way down the the left side of the lot line, I think we can, or the right side of the lot line, we can get it done. Tom. John, it seems to me last year, do we have maybe some issues with the neighbors on Bellow Circle with that garden being close to the proximity of those, some of those people's backyards, I thought I heard. And before we extend it, I would just hope the SAGE committee would reach out potentially those people that may be affected to make sure they're not, you know, they don't have a concern. I heard this at the, didn't we have a green day down there last year? Yeah. In April. I did hear that from one of the residents. So, so the, I'm not sure you, if it's a big there deal. Was some issue with it? Is I think I just think the the garden was a little bit too close to their backyard, and they might be having what I understood as a cookout, and there'd be people in there gardening or whatever that you know would be relatively close. Again, I don't know if it's a big issue or not, um, but I just before we expand it, I would just want them to. I think they want to expand it the other way, though. The other they? way. Yeah, I th I, it's on a to, going to get east. it away from yeah, the that'd border be good. there. Yeah. So it's uh, but that's the then you're fine. I'll, we'll uh, we'll check into that. Anybody else have any concerns? Or, uh? I think it's a good idea. I think the <laughs> I people. Think uh, I think it's a great thing. I people have I, used well, it in the past. For those who use it, it's an excellent I use opportunity. It. Oh, yeah. He didn't like it because I put a for sale sign on, it. <laughs> <laughs> on his plot. But. Right. Well, I know that, and actually the. Um, a couple of the plants were arrested for DWI. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, extension and send it to the Sage Committee. Okay, great. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, the other issue I have uh, is with the Community Development Advisory Committee. This has been advertised and we we have no volunteers now we made the announcement again tonight so uh, I, I know is it possible that we could consider um having somebody from uh, the planning board one from the zoning board and one from the finance committee serve on this committee if we can't get volunteers and i think that might be a good mix only because you know we're, we're expending money on a grant on the grant um and it deals with housing issues and i think that zoning and, and planning, th they may have an interest if, if we can't get anybody. Why don't, why don't we wait till our, yeah. it, it how, do they, is this critical to get this up and going? Or? Well, it is at some point because I'd want to finish this before I leave. Could you just, for the uh, benefit of the people that might be listening that might have an interest, could you explain a little bit about what I can, I can, I can do that. The, the, the town of Abington received a grant in the amount of $800,000 for housing rehab. It's a regional grant application between Whitman in Abington. Whitman has two people on the board, Abington has three. The um, advisory committee is, does just that. It advises the staff of the Office of Community Development on matters pertaining to policy, program guidelines, case waivers, and grievances by participants in the, in the program. Um, the community development uh, advisory committee meets on an as-needed basis over the course of the CDBG block grant, which is 18 months. The, the typical issues that are put forth uh, include changes to housing rehab program guidelines, single case waivers for projects with low bids that exceed the project cap of $35,000 a unit, and appeals of staff decisions uh, from applicants or participants. And this is important because not all the time is every participant going to agree with the guidelines or the, the housing rehab uh, items that are going to be done? And so as a result of that, they need somebody to go to to kind of argue their case, pro and con, and get the advisory committee to make that decision. It's, um, it really, to some degree, for a lack of better term, it, it is a, an appeals type board that listens to you know, contractor appeals, or, uh, housing participant appeals, or program um, manager appeals um, from the program itself. 
<coughs> and they can range from staff decisions to applicants or participants. So that's pretty much what the, it does. The time commitment wouldn't be a big time commitment because it's, it's as needed. And no. if there's appeals that come up, then they hear those. Yeah, and, and they're called on an as needed basis. <clears throat> Just one more question Is there any kind of. Uh, help from the state or any person that would give them guidance and you know you, you just went through a lot of stuff about the appeals and stuff like that but there's no real guidelines on how they, is there any kind of people that might give them an education or guide them through this process when they have some of these issues you just spoke about oh yeah no the the staff people for the office of community development are well versed in these types of committees so yes they there there's a whole bunch of guidelines and and, and issues that, and, and things that they have to follow that would be given to them, you know, if they decide to participate. Well, why don't we see how we make out between now and our next meeting, and if not, then we can reach out to the maybe that that group that you suggested. Okay. okay. Thank you. The um, the other issue I have is. Oh, the arch. I got to show you something. I got a nice little picture here. <laughs> show and tell time. This is a nice little picture of the arch just before the dedication. This is in the original frame, as you can tell. It's probably it's older than all of us put together. <laughs> but this is the arch. And this is the actual photograph taken by the artist who designed the eagle and the arch itself. Mm. So this was taken like days after this was completed. So this is its original form. It's in its original frame. It was given to the town by the granddaughter of the person who designed the arch. A very well renowned, renowned uh, designer and monument designer at that. So um, I'm going to probably give it to the uh, historical commission and see yeah. what they want to do with it if they want to do anything. Right. What year do you think that is, John? 1912. 1912. 1912. Looks nice. It's going to look that way again. It is. It's actually going to look that way. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what we're proposing. We do have um, the test borings back. We do have the. Um, uh, RFP, we're in the final stages of putting the RFP together, that'll be done before I leave, but um, we're looking at an eight-foot um, treatment of the uh, brick, or the, of the stone, mm -hmm. or the mason or work, whatever it's called, to um, eliminate uh, potential graffiti. It, this will, it'll, part of the work that'll be done will be to um, bring this so that it's we, we don't have to worry about graffiti again. In addition to that, we're going to have lighting, permanent lighting on the structure that will light the statue up, light this whole area up at night. So um, it's it's going to be uh, well done when it when it's when it's finally completed. But uh, the estimated time for completion will probably be next year sometime. There. Um, they can't, we've already put in some stipulations that the, uh, we have to go to Conservation Commission, we have to go to the Park and Rec uh, mm -hmm. Commission. In addition to that, uh, I can't have them working on a construction project <coughs> during the time the kids are at, at the Grove, so it's going to extend the construction period a bit as a result of that. So, great. Is that Mike in the background? Oh, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might be. <laughs> I think he's up in a tree. It's Mike coming right here. Thank you. And that, uh, I think, takes care of my report. Oh, yes. There's one other thing. I'm sorry. We um, have, every year, have had a problem with the Department of Revenue in relationship to our 53E and a half accounts. In your packet of information tonight, you have the matrix on the amount of money requested by each of the departments um, for FY14. And we are going to recommend the following because 
for example, the library, and we're not going to, we're going to recommend it, but we're going to um, discuss it with the library board of trustees. Um, they have not received revenue in three years for the, uh, their meeting facility operations and maintaining the public library meeting rooms. And it's a, they're looking for a thousand dollars. It's not a lot of money. We can keep it, but we have to justify if there's no money in the account to the Department of Revenue as to why we have the account. I can't answer the question. It's, it's, there's no defensible answer. So if we look at where we are, for example, we, um, the Library Board of Trustees have a, a, a fine uh, from lost, damage, or stolen library materials, and, and they have raised revenue in each of those years that are pretty comparable to the 1500 bucks that's there now. But for example, the matching fund requirements for police grants for the purchase of equipment uh, for the police department, the, um, in FY11, they had revenue of 26,000. FY12, they had revenue of 18,000. FY13, they've had revenue of 15,000. So we're thinking a $30,000 figure would be uh, more defensible than a $50,000 figure. Um, we're also the purchase of uh, drug prevention materials uh, from marijuana um, fines. I don't think we're going to get a lot of marijuana fines. They want to they want to open up marijuana farms, let alone fine people. So I think um, that number could be reduced to a thousand dollars. Then uh, the Board of Health, I think the twenty-five thousand that they have for CRT disposal. Um, although in FY12 they had 17,000, in FY13 they have 2456, in FY11 they had 2726. So we think reducing that to about 15,000 um, would be a good number. When we look at the Board of Health um, with respect to the, fi the funds for um, fines levied against businesses for violating the local tobacco control laws, that's an enforceable action, so we can't eliminate the account completely. But over the last three years, they haven't fined anybody. Now, I'm sure that if I talk to the um, health agent, we can get that number up. But um, I think that uh, we, we may want to consider reducing that. I'll have a recommendation when I talk to her about how much we're going to reduce that. The uh, school committee has requested for tuition collection for re preschool and full day kindergarten, they want to in they're increasing that number to 225,000 from 175. Is that correct? That's right. And, and we're comfortable with that. If you look at where they are right now for revenue in FY13, they're they've exceeded the amount of they're going to exceed the amount for FY13. So we have no problem increasing that 225,000. When I come the planning board, another example, um, thirty-five thousand, a good number to have. They have sixty. The um, in FY eleven they had twenty-nine thousand seven fifty-seven. In FY thirteen, FY twelve they had thirty thousand. In FY thirteen they had twenty-one thousand. FY twelve and thirteen, uh, I think having that number of thirty-five is more realistic. Um, now the council on aging. These are fees received from leasing rental. Um, as you can see, it's up to 25,000. Uh, we think 20 is a better number, um, although their revenue in 13 is 7570, and revenue in 12 was 14696, and revenue in FY11 was 11,931. Um, we think that the building uh, department um, revolving account there is is probably a little high. We're going to look at that number again before we make a final recommendation. Um, but I'm going to send out a, an email to each of the, uh, a letter or um, a memo to each of the departments impacted, um, telling them what we're going to recommend uh, to the Finance Committee. Um, and if they have any concerns, they can obviously see me about it. Um, but the problem that we're having is that we have to repeatedly answer questions from the Department of Revenue as to why these numbers are so inflated. And this is before we set our tax rate. I don't want this to become an issue for us in the future. Uh, so um, I've always said that I thought these numbers were high. Um, and I think we can cut them probably in half and, and 
and have a, a decent no this isn't going to uh, give us any additional revenue this is just looking at this realistically and yeah getting and to satisfy the DOR as far yeah. as you know. because I, I, ha I have one question what what would happen if they exceeded the receipts that were on this what would happen with those extra receipts well the statute requires that those money go to the general fund, general fund. so and I don't want these numbers to be inflated low so that the general fund right. gets additional revenue but I want them to be balanced and I guess is the real issue and and that's what, what's not happening right now any other questions is that it that's it okay yeah. thank you Spoke long enough. <laughs> <laughs> item number eight public comment is there any public comment no public comments I, I just have an information oh, yeah um, I got notice as a Plymouth County Advisory Board this Thursday at 7 p.m. in Bridgewater. I can't make it if anybody um, can. Just drop me a line and I'll send you the information. Great. Thank you. So at this point, we'd be looking for a motion to enter into executive session for the purposes of strategies pertaining to health care plans for fiscal year 2014 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining involving the Managers Association as an open session may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the board, to discuss strategy with respect to potential litigation involving the town manager contract as an open session may have a detrimental effect on the litigation, litigating position of the board, and to conduct strategy session in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, specifically the town manager's position. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Can I bring up one thing, though? Yeah, sure. Um, this has nothing to do with that, but I, on a pu public comment. Okay. Anybody wants to send in their comments for the town manager search, um, it is tmsearch at abingtonma.gov. Um, if you saw that on TV, the interviews, or if you were at the meet and greet, we did get some responses. So if anybody w wants to, uh, so you can let email you because we won't be deciding now for a couple more days. So. Thanks, Ken. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? If not, by roll call, Tom? Yes. Ken? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Mike? Yes. And I vote yes, and we will not reconvene. Thank you.